Good day, citizens. I'm JD. And I'm Connor. Now, I don't know about you, but I love comic books and superheroes. Oh, yeah. I love how superheroes stand up for what's right. And so far in this series, we've been talking about Daniel and how God gave him the conviction to see what was wrong and where people needed help. Yeah, that's right. But in the rest of our series, we're going to be talking all about Nehemiah. Now, all of the Bible stories that we talk about with Nehemiah take place like 90 years after Daniel trained in Babylon. And while God gave Daniel conviction to see what was wrong, he gave Nehemiah the initiative to do the right thing. We will get to see all of the ways that Nehemiah got to do this in the remainder of our series. But we will get to learn more about that in our Bible story today. First, it's time to play a game. It's gonna be all about using your brain in the power of memorization. We're gonna put an image on the screen and you will have 15 seconds to look at the image and memorize it as much as possible. Then we're gonna ask you three questions about the picture to see if you can remember the answers to the questions. Okay, we're gonna show you the first image in three, two, one. All right, time's up. Let's see how well you remember the pictures. The first question, how many superheroes were wearing capes? Write down all the answers because we will reveal them in the end. All right, second question. How many of the superheroes had logos on their chest? Here is our last question. How many of the superheroes had their arms up in the air? You think you got all the questions right? Let's see the first question. It was, how many superheroes were wearing capes? Let's look at our image and see. We have one, two, three. Three superheroes were wearing capes. Did you get that one right? Our second question was a little harder. How many of the superheroes had logos on their chests? Well, let's see. We've got one, two, three. Three superheroes with logos on their chests. And our last question was how many of the superheroes had their arms up in the air? And the answer is one, two superheroes. How many of those did you get right? All right, thanks for playing with us. I hope you got most of the questions right. Now we're gonna watch our Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters one and two. Over and over, the Israelites promised to be faithful to God, but over and over again, they turned away from him. At last, God allowed enemy armies to take his people captive and carry them off to Babylon, nearly a thousand miles away. After 70 years, God allowed some of his people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But back in Babylon, now part of Persia, the rest of the Jews had made lives for themselves. In fact, a Jew named Nehemiah had become quite important. Greetings. I am cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer was like a bodyguard who checked to make sure that no one poisoned the king's food or drink. Nehemiah was likely a trusted advisor. Your majesty, may I suggest the date pudding? But though it was nearly 150 years since the Israelites had left Jerusalem, Nehemiah's heart was still in his homeland. When his brother Hanani and I returned from his trip to Judah, Nehemiah had a chance for some news. Brother, how are the people left in Jerusalem? Some are still alive, but they're having a hard time. Oh no. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. People are ashamed. That's terrible. A city without walls could never prosper. The people would always live in fear of being attacked. I'm sorry to bring such bad news. No, no, I'm, I'm glad you told me. Dismayed, Nehemiah sat down and wept. He couldn't even eat for several days. Instead, he poured his heart out to God. Lord, you are a great and 
wonderful God. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying for the people of Israel. We Israelites have committed sins against you. We haven't obeyed the commands you gave to Moses. Nehemiah reminded God of the promise he made to his people. You said, if you people are not faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, I will bring you back. Lord, please pay careful attention to my prayer. Give me success when I bring my request to King Artaxerxes. For four whole months, Nehemiah prayed daily to God. He knew before taking action, he needed to listen and prepare. At last, he was ready. Your Majesty. Anyone who came before the king was supposed to appear happy. But for the first time, Nehemiah allowed his true feelings to show. Oh, why are you looking so sad? May you live forever? Why shouldn't I look sad? The city of my people has been destroyed and fire has burned up its gates. The king could have been annoyed and ordered Nehemiah to be punished, but God moved his heart. Well, what do you want? Nehemiah prayed silently for the right words. Send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. I want to rebuild it. The king frowned and glanced over at the queen. At last he said, hmm. How long will your journey take? When will you get back? Precisely as many moons as are required. Fair enough. Dismissed. Nehemiah turned to leave, but he knew there was more he needed for the job. If it pleases you, may I take some letters with me? I want to give them to the governors west of the Euphrates River, and they'll help me to travel safely. Mm, done. Oh, and a letter to the caretaker of the royal park? So he'll give me logs for the wall and gates and a house? <laughs> what next? A whole escort of army officers and horsemen? That would be fantastic. Fine. All of it. Get on with it. God had given Nehemiah such favor with the king that he had everything he needed for his long journey to Judah. At last, Nehemiah had reached the city he dreamt of his entire life. Jerusalem. Though Nehemiah was overjoyed by the first glimpse of the city, it must have been difficult to see its crumbling, broken down walls. So much work to be done. But Nehemiah didn't tell anyone his plan at first. On a bright moonlit night, Nehemiah snuck out with only a few others to see the full damage to the walls. We have to know what we're up against. Nehemiah traveled by dawn. With a few trusted friends, they left the city through the broken valley gate. Let's head toward the Jackal Well. At last, Nehemiah got a clear picture of the devastation. Jagged piles of rock lay everywhere. The gates were gone with scorched gaping holes in their place. It's such a big job. Only God can do this. Nehemiah circled what was left of the wall, heading up the Kidron Valley and at last returning through the valley gate. The next morning, he called together the priests and nobles and officials. You know, I've come to visit my people in Jerusalem but that's not the only reason I'm here. Nehemiah gestured to the jagged remains of the wall, visible from where they stood. You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Tell us something new. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and people won't be ashamed anymore. Hmm, well, I mean, I that's something to consider if you think about it. Our grandparents tried that years ago. But God has been helping me. He gave me favor with the king. He'll help us complete the work. So who's in? Well, me. I'm in. Me too. Let's start rebuilding. God moved the hearts of the people to help Nehemiah. And together they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and gates of Jerusalem. God moved the hearts of the officials and the people to help Nehemiah, and together they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and the gates of Jerusalem. Imagine what it would have been like for the people who lived in Jerusalem before Nehemiah came to town. They must have thought that, this, that rebuilding their city walls was impossible, but all it took was one person who took the initiative and helped them imagine what they could do 
together. Nehemiah didn't wait for someone else to take action. He made a plan and reminded the people of something important, that they could trust God no matter what. They could rely on God to accomplish this big job because they knew that God was with them. What does initiative look like for you? Maybe you say that the trash needs to be emptied or that the living room needs to be cleaned. You might even think to yourself, ugh, gross. Mm. I hope that someone else takes care of that soon. Well, that someone could be you. Yep, that's right. And that reminds me of our bottom line for today. Don't wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. Can you say that with us? Don't, Don't wait for, for someone, someone else, else to do what needs to be done. done. Let's say that one more time. Don't wait for someone else to do what needs to be done. Think about Jesus and how he took the initiative to help. When Jesus saw a need, he did something about it. He healed people who needed healing. He taught people who needed to learn. And he took care of our greatest need when he died on the cross for our sins. Yep, that's right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the story of Nehemiah. Thank you for the example he gave us for the way he saw something that needed to be done and did something about it. Help us look around for ways that we can take initiative to. Help us take action instead of waiting for someone else to help. We know that you will always be with us and there to help us whenever we need you. We're so thankful. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's all we have for today. See you, Grace Kids. Bye.